notes on 1.7, the geometry of higher order derivatives. So first of all, with a little review, we have a zero of the second derivative at A, and we know that to the left of A, the second derivative is positive, to the right, the second derivative is negative. So that would imply that our first derivative is increasing here and decreasing here. So we have a stationary point for that second derivative. And the concavity is changing on our original graph. So concave up where the second derivative is positive, concave down where the second derivative is negative. So we have an inflection point at x equals a. So as a little summary, the roots of the first derivative are stationary points of the original graph f. The roots of the second derivative are, I'm going to abbreviate sp, stationary points of the first derivative. And they could be inflection points. of f. Now this would be only true if that second derivative changes sign at the root. All right, let's take a look at an example here. We have a derivative f and we are given that that derivative is equal to zero at three so that's marked on my picture on my little chart and also equal to zero at five and then I've labeled what's happening with the first derivative it's positive to the left of three so that means f must be increasing it is negative between three and five, so f must be decreasing. It is negative again to the right of five, so it continues decreasing. x equals three and x equals five are stationary points Now let's take a look at when we know something about the second derivative. So if the second derivative is 0 at 3 and also 0 at 5, then let's do this double chart here, or I guess it's a triple chart. Then we know that the first derivative is increasing, then decreasing, and then still decreasing. So what does that say about going back another level to f? We are concave up, then we are concave down, and we are concave down. So x equals 3 is an inflection point because the concavity changes. That's what makes you have an inflection point. But x equals 5 is not an inflection point, and abbreviate, because the concavity doesn't change. So you cannot make a blanket statement that the zeros of the second derivative are necessarily inflection points. It has to be a place where the concavity actually changes. All right, next part. Let f be a smooth function and let l be a, the line tangent to f at the point x equals a. So if f is concave down on an interval containing x equals a, then l must lie. If, you, if we were together in person, you would see me doing my hands with this. So if it's concave down, 
then L has to be above. So like my L1 over here. If F is concave up on this interval containing X equals A, sort of like this, then L would have to lie below F. And then if X is an inflection point, the tangent line crosses F at X equals A. You have a very, very important set of statements here to make sure that you understand. So you got the second derivative test. Suppo suppose that the derivative of A, sorry, the derivative of F at A equals zero. So A is a stationary point. So knowing that, knowing that the first derivative equals zero at A, if the second derivative is positive, then we can say F is concave up. So that must mean if F is concave up, then we have a local minimum at X equals A. All right, so next scenario. Still got F prime is equal to zero. So if F prime, if F double prime of A is less than zero, so second derivative is negative, then F is concave down. Well, then that would have to tell us that F has a local maximum at X equals A. Now, if you know that the second derivative is equal to zero, so remember our first derivative was already equal to zero at X equals A. And if we know the second derivative is zero, that is really not telling us anything anything could happen. F could have a local max, a local min, a flat spot. It could be concave up, concave down, inflection point. We, so that doesn't tell us anything. All right, so an example on the back. If the first derivative at eight is equal to zero. So that's telling me that at x equals eight, we got a stationary point. And the second derivative is negative. Does F have a local max, local min, or neither at X equals eight? So first of all, let's say F prime of eight is zero. So that tells me X equals eight is a stationary point of F. The second derivative is negative. So F must be concave down at x equals eight. So F has to have a local max. If it's concave down, there has to be a max there. All right, now I'm hoping that this works. It, I said consider the functions on my graphing calculator and which one is F of x and which one is F prime. So I want you to look at these and see which one is the function itself and which one would be the derivative. So here's my calculator. So take a look at the blue graph and a look at the red graph. Notice with the blue graph, it is decreasing. There is a local minimum. Look at the red graph. There is a zero. The red graph is negative up to the point where this blue graph changes from decreasing to increasing. Then the red graph becomes positive. Look at that. We've got a little local max. There is a zero again. So I think with me talking you through that, it's probably pretty clear that the blue is the original function and the red is its derivative.